Hello, dear candidates preparing for the advanced level. Welcome to the GCE Maths panel. I am Dr. Miles, your host. In this particular presentation, we look at June 2020 Pure Math Statistics, Paper 2, Questions 1 and 2. The first thing to do is to click on the subscription button and equally the notifications so that you get updates on all the videos which we are going to be uploading to assist you in the process of preparing for your exams. Stay tuned and welcome. Let's begin with this first question of June 2020. Given that x plus one is a factor of f of x, where f of x equals x cubed plus six x squared plus 11 x plus six, factorize f of x completely. We have been told that x plus one is a factor. So we can use long division to get the other two factors. So here we divide all true by x plus two, which is the factor. And when we do this division, we have the remainder to be equal to zero, corresponding with what the equation says that x plus one is a factor. And our quotient is x squared plus five x plus six. So f of x can therefore be expressed as x plus one into x squared plus five x plus six. And when we further factorize x squared plus five x plus six, we have x plus two into x plus three. The second part of this question, which a lot of students find difficulty in is, let lambda be a real constant. Show that the roots of the quadratic equation, three x squared plus minus four minus two lambda, x plus two lambda equals zero are always real. Always real. Now we know the condition for the roots of a quadratic to be real. For the roots of a quadratic to be real, the discriminate must be greater than or equal to zero. So that is what we are going to use in this proof. But students may end up being stuck here and I show you a simple procedure to actually get the results. We will be using the idea of perfect squares. So here, the roots are real and equal. I'm sorry, the roots are real if and only if the discriminate is greater than or equal to zero. So we look for the discriminate, that is b squared minus four ac, and we have four lambda squared minus eight lambda plus 16. So we are now going to work on this. If you use other methods, you get stuck to solve for lambda one and lambda two for the new equation. It will not give you any result. So this is what you must do. So we bring out this four, or you can work with it directly. So here we have lambda squared minus two lambda plus four. So we can make this one to be a perfect square. This will give us lambda squared minus two lambda plus four. And now in these brackets that we have here, we are going to make these brackets to be a perfect square. So what do we do? We take a half of minus two, which is minus one, we square it and add to what we have inside these brackets and what we have outside. So we have plus minus a one squared. So we subtract it here to balance it such that we have not changed anything in the equation. We now simplify. This one will now give us lambda minus one all squared. And outside we have four minus one, which is three. At this point we have, we can expand or you can leave it like this. You have four into lambda minus one all squared plus 12. Normally this quantity will be always greater than or equal to zero. In actual terms, it will strictly greater than zero because if this term here is equal to zero, we will be left with 12. So normally it is strictly greater than zero at all times. So normally this one should just be strictly greater than zero. So what do we say? That since lambda is strictly greater than zero, therefore the roots of this quadratic are always real. That is the proof. Please guys, don't forget, visit our blog www.gcmathpanel.blogspot.com where you will have past questions 
in all the subjects and in mathematics, pure maths, mechanics, and statistics, and even for technical. Don't forget to visit the blog and share with your friends. Equally, you can visit us on Facebook or join our Facebook page where we discuss on any video that is uploaded and any other related materials to exams. Equally, we have information to discuss with you concerning traveling to study abroad and scholarship, as well as series to choose in the university, in the different universities here in Cameroon, and a lot more like our awards page. Let's now look at the second question. Given that y equals lean, 4 plus x squared, find the y dx. And the second part of it, the equations of the tangents are normal to the curve y equals lean 4 plus x squared at the point where x equals 1. Uh, so since this is a logarithmic function, the derivative is given by the core, the derivative of the core divided by the core. So the core here actually is this 4 plus x squared. The derivative of this core gives us 2x, so divided by the core itself, so on 4 plus x squared. The B part of the equation, though it is written A, we have to look for the equations of the tangents and normal to this curve. So the equation of the tangents to this curve, we have to look for dy dx at the point x equals one. And that will give us two on five. And that is the gradient of the equation of the tangent. So we now look for y of one so that we can get the y value. Y of one will give us the five when we put inside this equation. And therefore we have the point A with coordinates one and lean five. So the equation of the tangent will be given by y equals m into x minus x1 plus y1, where uh, m is equal to feet, that is empty, and our x1 and y1 are respectively one and lean five. Then to get the equation or the gradient of the normal, the gradient of the normal, since two lines are perpendicular if the product of their gradient is negative one, so the gradient of the normal will be minus one of, over the gradient of the tangent, giving us minus five on two. Therefore, the equation of the normal will be equal to minus five on two into x minus x1, that is x minus one, plus lean five. Please don't forget to subscribe and watch the next video, which is on questions three and four. Don't forget to share with your friends who might be in the suburbs and having difficulty to access information due to many other things. And thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to visit our page. Stay tuned and uh, we move to the next part of the equation. Now solve the differential equation dy dx equals xy minus x given that y equals two and x equals zero, expressing y in terms of x. So for this uh, equation, dy dx will be equal to xy minus x. We do this by separating variables. So on the right hand side, you have x into y minus one. We now divide both sides by y minus one. We will have dy on y minus one to be equal to, we multiply both sides by dx, x dx. We now put the integral signs on both sides of the equation. And when we integrate the left-hand side, when you differentiate y minus one, you have one. So the integral of the left-hand side is lean, absolute value y minus one. You must put this absolute value because if y is, for example, negative, then we will have, for example, negative one minus one is minus two. And the lean of negative numbers is not defined. So this absolute value comes to clarify that concept. On the right-hand side, the integral is x squared on two plus k, where k is an element of r. Now at the point zero two, they want us to look for the value of k. That's why they've given us the point zero two. So at the point zero two, when we put x, replace x by zero and y by two in this uh, equation, which you have obtained, we will have lean two minus one to be equal to zero squared on two plus k and k is equal to zero, giving us this to be lean absolute value of y minus one to be equal to x squared on two. And um, to remove the lean, we raise both sides to the power e. When we raise the left hand side to the power e, we'll be left with y minus one. The absolute sign is no more important because the lean is not there. 
and y will be equal to e to the power x squared on 2 plus 1. Thank you so much and welcome to the GCE Math Panel. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and visit our blog. Bye-bye.